Hello and welcome to episode 7 of our Getting Started with Shading and Rendering with Mantra workshop. In this episode, I wanted to show you how to get started with mixing down different shaders or materials. In our case, we have a principal shader defined materials and we mix, we will mix them using the noise. This technique is important to understand going forward to create our procedural materials for further lessons, but it shouldn't be too hard. So let's jump right in. Let's talk about mixing materials. So in this situation, as you can see, I have a camera, I have an area light, which is located above my little scene. We have left, middle and right spheres, and we have a floor and that's it. I'll go back to my camera one. So as we can see in the render uh, in the render preview, I don't even have any shaders, so let's create some. Okay, so I start uh, typing down the principled shader, and uh, I left mouse drag while holding down the Alt key uh, to create a copy of that shader. So, as per usual, I kind of like the orange. Uh, I kind of like the, the orange color, to be honest. So the left uh, will be orange non-metallic, the right will be dark, gray, metallic, with roughness 0 0.3, just to, you know, see the difference in our materials. And I'm thinking uh, to, the, to the left sphere, we'll get a uh, little uh, roughness variations going through the noise. So rest position, uh, we get to the noise. Um, in this case, I think anti-alias noise will be fine. And as we remember from previous videos, the anti-alias can get us negative values. So I'll get it to the absolute to have everything positive. We pipe the rest position to the position. The noise goes into the abs uh, absolutes. Then we get the ramp. Don't forget to rem uh, rename the ramp to ramp one, because otherwise uh, it will inherit unpredictable values from it. Okay. And uh, as a final thing, I, uh, what is it? The principal shader one, my bad. Let's, let's call it left orange, just for not getting, um, not getting lost <laughs> in our setups. Okay, so ramp one goes into the roughness and previously the roughness was 0 0.15. So the noise should be going from 0 0.1. Again, I'm holding down the middle mouse and dragging left and right. Carefully get it to point two. Okay, this looks fine. And um, I'll get the roughness to the maximum. <clears throat> Let's see. Okay. It has a little bit of roughness going on. <coughs> I apologize. And um, to the our metallic thing, I'll go and give it, uh, actually, I'll give it a, sim a similar setup. Um, let's see, roughness. Okay, this looks good. And finally, we go normal along, uh, displace along normal, I apologize. And the absolute value to the amount. Actually, we don't need absolute because this is normal. <laughs> Pun not intended. Uh, displace, um, displace normals to base normals, and th we should have the indentations, which will be looking very, very overblown. Okay, let's get it 0 0.1. Yeah, still too much, I think, 0, 0, 0.005. Okay, this looks kind of better. Now, we have this set up, and you're thinking, well, this is a curiously placed sphere number three, which is middle one. What if we could mix our, let's say, plastic, our metal, and it will be mixed through some kind of pattern. In our case, again, we will be using noise. By the way, as you can see, I'm using the same rest position uh, to pipe different noises because rest position it can be defined just once you don't need it for uh, to copy it for every other material. Okay, so how do we mix it? We mix it by 
<laughs> pressing the tab and starting to write mix. And as you can see, there is the layer mix. And um, it has the inputs A, the inputs B, and some kind of alpha. All right, first, I'll drag and drop the layer mix onto our sphere middle. And naturally, we don't have anything on it, so it becomes pitch black. Okay, so we get this layer and we connect it to A. We get this layer and we connect it to B. <clears throat> and we start seeing happening something. Not sure what exactly. Apparently, as you can see, the mix is going from uh, zero to one. So uh, if we mix it to zero, you can see we only almost have this metallic thing. If we go closer to one, we will only have the yellow part of our mix and 0 0.5 or close to that as you will see it's something in the middle which looks kind of weird and I don't really want this to be happening so what I'm gonna do now is drop another noise and another ramp and we start with the anti-alias noise I think we'll go with um, actually I think turbulent noise yeah we'll go with the zero centered if I remember correctly it has like a pattern of the spots on the cow, sort of. <laughs> um, and when we pipe this one into alpha, we'll see what's happening. Now, I just want to drop another ramp here. I'll uh, as we can see, it's ramp two, so I rename it to ramp two. There we go. Um, okay. So to increase the uh, contrast between them, I just move this slider to the right, this slider to the left. I'm not exactly sure which uh, values do we actually need. I think <clears throat> somewhere around 0 0.2 should be good. Let's see. I'm dragging just the handles and it's working just fine. Okay. Um, essentially, turbulent noise gives us uh, really low values. But as you can see, now that I'm increasing the, the contrast between the alpha of the noise, uh, in our case, it's just a mask that goes procedurally uh, driven by the turbulent zero center curly noise. And we, yeah, we have the result that we were going for. I'll increase the frequency to maybe two. Okay, this did not go well. Let's say, I don't know, five. And yep, there you go. Uh, using the noise, actually, I will increase roughness and decrease the turbulence drastically to, to actually give uh, this effect sort of like the, uh, the cow spots that we talked about previously. And the result is exactly what we were hoping for. Uh, driven by the noise, want to, let's say, colorize our left sphere, and uh, we want this to propagate in our shader mix, so I'll just create a copy of this ramp and I'll make it go from dark red to deep, uh, deeper pink color. I connect the ramp to the base color. As you can see, we have some kind of problem because obviously we have this colorized ramp and nothing is colorized. What, what is going on, right? Uh, as you can see, this says ramp 3, but the name says ramp 1. So essentially, it copies anything that was in ramp 1. There we go. If you change this to ramp 3 as well, it should be, should be back to normal. Yeah, uh, here we go. I think I want to have like a little bit more drastic change from this turquoise color, just to illustrate that we are indeed propagating our stuff. So yeah, if you... Uh, tweak your initial shader in any way imaginable, and you then mix down the mix goes propagate. I mean, when you are building the, let's say you have this uh, rusted metal that you wanna um, you wanna mix down with some, I don't know, pristine metal or maybe some uh, plastic. This is the way to go. So, um, from from like the bird's eye view, right? It looks 
a bit, I don't know, let's say it looks like a net of something connected. You don't even know what's happening. But since we have gone through the whole process, you can see that it's not very hard. Final thing, I'll just stop the rendering. And this is actually curious. So if I go to object and I duplicate my middle object, I turn it, I turn this one off and just, uh, let's say it's not a sphere, it's, I don't know, it's a, it's a box which has been beveled. Okay. Where is, where is it? Give me a second. Okay, round. Okay, everything uh, looks good. So if we want this box, And um, rename it to box. And the rendering should be again our um, where is it? Our layer mix, right? So if we go to uh, the material palette, as you can see, we have only the left orange shader and the right black shader. And the layer mix does not show up. And if we go to material, we go to material, it does not show up. And you're like, um, this is inconvenient. <laughs> so you can drag and drop uh, in the viewport, like we uh, can do in the render view, drag and drop when we are rendering. It's, I just click render, just showcase that it actually, yeah, it did, it did work. And that's our box is gonna be this alien cow material. Give it a second to compute the shader. Okay, beautiful. Now, the other way of doing that, which I personally prefer, if I hold down the Alt key and click the left bracket, as you can see, this divided my network view into two views. And here, if I click here somewhere, and again, hold down the le um, the Alt key and left bracket. It divided as well. Now what I'm gonna do is right click on this pin and make it say one. Right click on this pin and make it say one. Then I right click on this pin and make it say two. Same here, right click two. So what is happening? What is going on? As you can see, we can select things, but if we jump inside this, um, this uh, object level network, you can see that this, our left side that we have pre-divided, stays where it was. So why is that important? Because if I now want to give my material, uh, as we can see, uh, as we can have already mentioned, there is now such thing as a layer mix. So I go to our material network, and now that I see our layer mix, I can select here my box. I can get here my layer mix. And if I drag and drop it here, as you can see, that worked. So that's a little quirk, but actually this setup I'm using constantly for uh, look dev, for creating materials, for simulations, or just adjusting VOPs and all the good stuff that Houdini has, right? So you can totally divide stuff into two stuff. Uh, I mean, totally divide the object, um, the network view into two network view, maybe even three. If you have like a huge uh, 30 inch display, you can have like, I don't know, you have, have columns of stuff going on. So yeah, <laughs> there you go. A little tip. If you don't see it, you, you can just drag and drop from, um, from the material network to the object level, just like we did right now. So there you go. Um, alien cow material sort of thing. And these were the basics of mixing the shaders. And we will see how to create a procedural Terran wear, dirt masks, dust masks, and uh, occlusion masks going forward. This was just important to give you the understanding how this method works. Thanks for watching and see you later. Hopefully this was useful for you. If you liked the video, press the like button. If you don't want to miss anything else from this workshop or anything else that we have in the making going forward, hit the subscribe button. If you have some ideas and suggestions, leave them in the comments below and have a nice day.